Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine McCoy and I'm going to present, be presenting on natural killer cells infiltrating the germinal centers. Over my summer internship, I have been working in the histology department of HPP. So Jerome has already talked about the rising need for a cure to HIV and why we study the lymph nodes so closely. As we can see in this figure, the immune system uses CD8 positive T cells to express perforin and granzyme that are able to kill HIV infected cells. And we're going to short, shorten perforin and granzyme as perf and GZM. According to a paper, Betts et al. 2017, we're able to see that CD8 positive T cells in the lymph node express little to no perforin and granzyme relative to those found in the blood. Jerome also stated that the killing capacity of CD8 cells within the lymph node is lower than the killing capacity of CD8 cells in the blood. And preliminary, preliminary lymph node studies within the Nenlovu lab have shown that there are cells in the lymph node that express the cytolytic molecules perforin and granzyme, but they are not CD8 positive T cells. Therefore, our next Therefore, we're led to believe that it could be NK cells. That leads us to wonder, what is the phenotype and location of natural killer cells within the lymph node? We hypothesize that HIV-1 infection changes the distribution of NK cells within the lymph node, and that early ART initiation might promote the migration of NK cells into the germinal centers, those immune privileged sites. And in order to test these hypotheses, we will be using immunohistochemistry. We begin with an unstained slide. The tissue is encased in wax, so we bake it overnight in an oven. After baking, we deparaffinize and rehydrate the slides. Then we do antigen, antigen retrieval in a microwave and start the staining process. There are two separate procedures for staining. One is called IHC Brightfield. The other is multicolor immunofluorescence. The next slide will show how they are different, but afterwards we cover slip and we image using a microscope. There are two possible outcomes for staining. IHC Brightfield takes one round of staining and you're left with the colors a light blue and golden brown, whereas multicolor immunofluorescence staining takes three rounds yielding four colors. DAPI is what we show in blue, and our group uses FIT-C for green, Texas Red for red, and Sci-5 to show orange. Our first set of results come from a Brightfield staining where we optimized the CD56 antibody. CD56 is meant to show the location of natural killer cells. So we stained the same tissue in different dilutions of CD56. After imaging, we compared the pictures and decided that the 1 in 50 dilution would be best because it shows the clearest image of CD56 when we're staining. The first patient that we used is negative, and they are LN0115. In the top left hand, right hand corner, I've put a few, a little bit of information about this patient and what is going on in their body. When we zoom in, we're able to see that the CD56 shown in red is localized outside of the germinal centers, where the BCL6 is showing the germinal center in green. Our untreated patient is LN0151. When we zoom in, we see that the untreated patient demonstrates that there is new localization of NK cells. I've pointed out some of the green CD56 that exists both inside of the germinal center and outside of the germinal center. Therefore, our first hypothesis is supported, that infection does change NK cell distribution within the lymph node. Then we moved on to early treated patient LN088. This early treated patient shows no evidence of migration. All of the CD56 is still localized outside of the germinal center. In late treated patient LN0138, the same is also true, that there is no change in localization for the NK cells. They are still outside of the germinal center. Therefore, our second hypothesis is not supported. Early ART initiation does not promote the migration of NK cells into the germinal center of the lymph node. Now that we can see the, lymph, the natural killer cells, we wonder, what cytolytic markers are natural killer cells expressing? We hypothesize that the natural killer cells are expressing perforin and granzyme. And this is exactly what we are able to find. 
At the far left is a picture of just the CD56 signal. That is your natural killer cell. Then we have an isolated picture of the perforin signal, and at the far right is a merged picture of both the CD56, the natural killer cell, with the perforin. Therefore, this NK cell does have the ability to express perforin. NK cells are also able to express granzyme, as seen in examples like this, where we have C isolated CD56, isolated granzyme signal, and a combination of both CD56 and granzyme co-staining. This combination of co-staining was less common than that for CD56 and perforin. We were even able to find multiple examples of co-staining between all three signals. So at the far left is the isolated CD56, then the granzyme B, perforin signal, and finally all three of the signals overlapping in one image. It's important to note that the signal for perforin was always much stronger than the signal for granzyme. And this is just another example of the co-staining, but with all of this scanning done, we have to ask the important question, so what? From our results, we can conclude that NK cells are readily detectable within the lymph node regardless of HIV or treatment status, that when the patient is untreated, natural killer cells can be found within the germinal center as well as outside of the germinal center, that ART does not cause NK cells to migrate into the germinal centers, and co-staining of CD56 and perforin was much more common than co-staining of CD56 and granzyme. For further exploration, we would like to measure the efficiency of NK cells in their ability to kill HIV-infected 